Right. How does this work? All right, so I am going to be trying to learn Go just for a little bit on the stream. There's no real reason why, just people... I think Go and Rust are things that are talked about a little bit. I just want to kind of like play around with them to see if they're even like worth looking into. Um, I've used Node.js for like basically all my backend stuff. And there's times where I'm like, I don't know, JavaScript feels kind of uh, ugly as a language. And using something more... Uh, strictly typed and something that seems more like I don't want to say professional but something about JavaScript just seems kind of hacky but it doesn't mean it's bad <clears throat> but I want to try playing around with either Rust or Go and I decided to choose Go first to see how it is I have no idea what I'm doing so the first thing I'm doing is installing um, the ARM64 Go and let's see if there's like a get started guide go to learn I guess <clears throat> Go to my chat real quick. How's it going, everyone? My wife, Tina Seibert, says I should learn Go, so that's why I'm, I'm learning Go right now. You hear that, Tina? I want to make sure you heard that. Um, the first language I learned was... Uh, what's it called? Uh... I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Visual Basic? I think it's Visual Basic. It's so long ago, I don't even know. Like this isn't like a, a middle school, high school learning to code class. But like I think it was Visual Basic where you have like this little this GUI. You can like add buttons and then like add click events to them and do all this other stuff. It's pretty cool. Um I think Visual Basic, or I think I've maybe played around with like C or something, but yeah, I did PHP for a little bit when I first started getting into like web development and like how do you build out APIs and how do you build out server side rendered pages. Uh, PHP is pretty cool. I like PHP. Super easy to like deploy PHP apps. <clears throat> Yeah, I install Go. Can I just type Go? I might have to reload Visual Studios. Hmm. All right, let me go back to install Go because I must have not done it correct. Open up the package file you downloaded and follow the prompt. So I'll go. Let's see if we have that i'll go ls user grep go let's see if that shows up okay we have go it's not on my path though so i probably just need to like package should put the let me put this in my path export path equals path i think it's a semicolon access denied Wonder why it has access denied. <clears throat> this is the fun start. I mean, maybe I need sudo. Like, why would I need sudo for Go? Maybe I need the CH mod it. Uh. 
<laughs> oh wait, maybe that's why. Use your local go bin go. Oh, here we go. How come my export thing didn't work? Export path is equal to path. Oh, I don't think it's a semicolon, is it? There we go. Simple mistake. Okay, so we got go install. We can actually run the go command. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, let's just make like a go playground. And let's open that. <clears throat> All right. What's up, a booty? Yeah, I hear a lot of good things about Laravel. I've never used it before, though. Um, why do you prefer Node over PHP? Uh, I think I use Node mainly because I can write JavaScript slash TypeScript on the back end, and then also I can write JavaScript slash TypeScript on the front end, so there's only one thing I have to worry about. There's not a lot of context switching. Um, I'm not a fan of like learning all these different languages just, just to achieve like a full-stack application, but each their own. Awesome. Glad to hear that, Vindy, that my videos have helped you land a job. I'm glad to hear that. You have to browse into many repos and read their MD files. You can rarely find the websites for the docs. Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time like playing with it. That's one to do like the syntax, but. You need to use the same sentence before using. Yeah, I was using a semicolon. Um, okay, so it's running. Let's just go to like, where are the tutorials? I saw a tutorial here a second ago. Let me go back. Getting started. Okay, we got this kind of working. Actually, does this still work? I just reloaded. Okay, here. That works fine. Enable dependency tracking for your code. When your code imports packages contained in other modules, you manage those dependencies own modules. Uh, okay. To enable dependency tracking for your code by creating a go mod file, run the go mod init command. Go mod init. Okay, I don't know what this is doing. Create a hello directory for your first go source code. Okay, I named mine go playgram. And then they're saying, yes, example slash, I don't know why you need example. Example slash go playground. Okay. I'm just learning Go just for fun. I'm going to go back to my normal TypeScript, JavaScript stuff like in my other videos. But I wanted to do a live stream, and I don't want to work on my StarCraft II build order stuff on a live stream. I want to keep that purely just me recording videos and publishing them. Um, and I just want to take a break from like all the, I don't want to say take a break, but just have some, just have something different. Um, I mean, working on like the T3 stack stuff all the time gets kind of boring. Oh, hold up. We got a super chat. Helped me get a banger job, so here's some money. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate that. I would pronounce your name if I knew how to, um, but I can't. So thank you so much for that guy. I'm glad to hear people are getting jobs by watching some of my, my stuff. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just like go on there and it's like publish random stuff, and but it seems like it's actually helping a lot of people. So I am I learning Go? Yeah, I answer that one. Yeah, like Go is different. Uh, I'm just learning it for fun. It's not necessary unless you're working at a company that is using Go for their backend slash scripts or whatever. I'm just learning it because it's been out for a while now. People have talked about it. A lot of people are talking about Rust. 
I still love JavaScript and Node, so I mean, like, this is just a side thing I'm doing. Can I tell you one resource to learn it? Uh, you can tell me whatever, that's fine. I want to learn web development. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, y'all. <y'all. clears> Gotta clear my throat. Is it better to learn Python JS or Java JS for web? Uh, I think there, it doesn't matter. I personally would use Node plus JS just so you can stick to like one language. Like to learn Python and then to also learn JavaScript, that's too much in my opinion for a beginner to have to focus on two different languages, two different syntaxes, two different paradigms for all this different stuff. So I would say use Node for your API. I, I was just going to try it. I, I haven't used Go, right? I have no idea. This is the furthest I've gotten. I haven't even ran a Go file, so maybe I should start working a little bit faster. What's my zoom at? Two. Okay, I, I made a Go mod file. I guess this is kind of like the requirements that you have in like Python, where it tells you like, uh, you know, what versions of certain things you need. Now, I don't know what this is. I guess this is the namespacing for my module example, and this is the name of my like. I really don't know what this is, honestly. But hey. In your text editor, create a file called hello go in which you write your code. Okay. Let's do that. Hello.go. Paste it in. This is your Go code. In this code, you declare a main package. Okay. Package is a way to group functions together. Import popular FMT package, which contains functions for formatting text, including printing to the console. This package is one of the standard library packages you get when you install Go. Implement a main function to print a message to the console. Now run your code like this. Okay. It prints out hello world. Awesome. Can we build something that's more special? All code in an external package. When you need to code, when you need your code to do something that has might might have been implemented. Let me zoom in a little bit. By someone else, you can look for a package that has functions you can use in your code. Make your printed message a little more interesting with a function from an external module. Visit package go dev and search quote. Okay. Locate. Which one is this saying? Get RSC IO quote. I guess this one. Derek Bananas. Uh, bananas. Um, I think I've seen him pop up on my feed some. I did a grammatical mistake in above comment. Sorry for that. I'm not judging you on grammar. Uh, my grammar sucks as well. So type, type however you want to type. You need to import FMT to print something in terminal. It's so strange. I mean, it's not too strange. A lot of languages do that. Like, a file can't really do much until you start importing other libraries and modules, right? So even in Java, I don't know if you use Java, but you have to do like import. Well, I mean, Java, you don't have to do that, do you? It's just system out that print line, <clears throat> which is kind of like a static variable that's put on the system out. Um, anyway, let's just keep going through this. Let's go learn some Go. And it's good to watch. This is how I learned to code as well. I mean, like, I literally read through the Getting Started Guide. A lot of people ask, like, how do you learn a new language? You, you read through their docs. They tell you how they get started. They tell you how to do stuff. And you actually have to read through this and understand, like, what's going on. Now, it's a little daunting because, like, half these words you probably won't know. Like, what is a package? What is a function? What is an external module? Like, you're going to be lost if you know what, you know, these things are in general. But anyway, visit the Go website. Locate and click RSC, whatever. I did that. <clears throat> In the documentation section under index, note the list of functions you can call from your code. You will use the go function. At the top of the page, 
Note that package quote is included in the RSEIO quote module. You can use uh, you can use the package go site to find published modules whose packages have functions you can use. So maybe going back to this thing, this is my module name. So if I were to publish this to that go repo package manager thing, I bet you it would show up as example slash go playground. Maybe a version would be extended. And then when you import that thing somehow, I'm not sure how they do that. I guess they do here. You can just import your modules directly in your code. I'm guessing when you run Go, it probably downloads this thing somehow and puts it in your, like a dependency folder. And then you can run it. Again, I don't know. I'm just guessing. It's always good to kind of like, a, like before you actually do stuff, assume what you think it might do. And then challenge your assumptions by just like running it. Um, okay, so that failed because it cannot find this. So similar to NPM, I guess you have to run go get RSCIO quote. Now, did the docs even say that? Oh, that down here it says add new module requirements in sums. Go will add the quote modules as a, why would you put this in a getting started and sums? Like they, like if a beginner's running through this, you're not gonna know what that even means, and sums. That's so confusing. Add new module requirements and sums, like hash sums. But at least that's what I think it's talking about. <clears throat> Go will add the quote module as a requirement. There's something I'm missing here. <clears throat> I guess if you run go mod tidy, it'll actually like inspect your code and install any dependencies you don't have. They did not explain that too well at all. They should have named this to like automatically search your code for non-imported packages and import them by using go mod tidy. Kind of poorly explained in my opinion, but hey. Go run dot. Don't communicate by sharing memory. Share memory by communicating. Okay, so I guess it just makes a quote. Does the same quote every time. Like how, what's the point of this package? Go returns a go proverb. Hello returns a greeting. Okay, I guess I need to install. Isn't go supposed to be like typed? Shouldn't I get like IntelliSense going? Let me install this. Go please command is not available, please. Okay, sure. <clears throat> go dot sum um okay i see a sum thing now the the issue i have is this is a getting started page the first mention of sum go will add the quote module as a requirement well is it go dot sum authenticating the module okay maybe i'm just dumb i didn't read I like to complain about stuff. You guys have watched my stuff. No, I just uninstalled it. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, okay, here we go. I guess I'm IntelliSense. Starting and linting. Oh, it also, also lints for me. That's nice. Why is it putting a space here? That's kind of ugly. But hey, trust the linter, I guess. <coughs> Um, okay, just give me a second. I gotta wipe my nose. It's like
<laughs> and by the way, if, for people watching, I don't actually need a wheelchair. I'm just sitting in this because that's... I'm trying to buy a new chair when I get enough money for my actual, like, my desk setup. Like a nice... I don't know if I want to buy, like, a gaming chair or an actual, like, nice office chair. Those gaming chairs look nice, but I read some reviews on them. The gaming chairs. Like, have you guys seen these 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 type of chairs? Um, what is the one called that I was looking at? Are these just dumb? Are these just overpriced like car seats? Basically, I was thinking about even getting one of these or getting like an like actual like ergonomic office chair, but that's. That's not even related to go, so let me just go back to what I'm doing. <clears throat> oh, let me check chat. I figure you guys are talking. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's how it works. Oh, you're writing Go. Awesome. I did my BSC project in Go. I don't know what BS, Bachelor's in Computer Science project? Don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, you need Go PLS for IntelliSense. Why did you sign or Go? Um, uh, I don't know, because people talk about Go and people talk about Rust, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of using Node. Honestly, I've been using it for so long that it's like, okay, I want to just try something new instead of having to like use Node. Could you create a server with Go? Maybe we'll see how far we get. Sitting on one now. Get your secret lab. Secret lab. Get Chat GPT. DX Racer versus. I both can say a normal office chair is better. Yeah, I was I was watching some some videos about like reviews and people are saying that like an office chair is basically going to feel much better sitting on it for the long term versus these gaming chairs. They look cool, but it's like if you think about driving in your car, like those leather bucket seats, they're very uncomfortable. After about two hours of driving in that car, you're like, dude, I gotta get out and walk around because my back's hurting. It's just not really ergonomic for your, your body. So I might just shoot for an office chair. But then then again, they're usually a little bit more expensive. Oh, you mean ass GDP? <laughs> that one says Secret Lab is definitely worth it. Use chat. <clears throat> okay, this guy really wants me to use chat, chat GPT. Use it for what? Asking about office chairs? Listen, AI is cool, but I don't need to ask AI for every single thing. Like, I have live humans I can talk to. Okay? I'd rather talk to humans than a computer. Because you guys can tell me I'm wrong. The AI is going to be too nice. All right. What I want to do is, how do you read in a file? Now, that I could use chat, chat GPT for. Now that I just said I want to talk to humans. I demand how to read a file and go. Here we go. I need to delete all these other things. Their conversation. Oh, let's not do it yet. All right. <clears throat> In Go, you can use IOUtils refile function. This function takes the path to a new path to the file as an argument and returns the content of the file as a slice of bytes. Here is an example of how to use it. Okay. Isn't coding great? You pay something. Oh, it, it clears it out because it's not being used. What a great linter. I'm just kidding. I'm being, I'm being uh, facetious, facetious. Is that the word? I hate that. Don't delete code that I pasted in. So now I actually have to go and like put some code because my linter's deleting crap, which I could probably disable, maybe. Um, delete unused import. Like, it's cute to, like, auto-delete my code, but I'd rather not be touching my code. Anyway, let's just make a file. I'll call it, like, test.json. <clears throat> Name. WebDevJunkie. So let's just see if we can load this in. 
And I don't know how like paths work and go. Let's see what this is doing. But if I rerun that tidy command, does it actually go through and delete this quote crap? Let's try it. It did. That's pretty cool. So that I do like. So you can just run a command and it kind of figures out what what libraries and packages are you actually using. And then it'll like clear it out. Go run dot. What is this going to do? It prints out my string. Pretty cool. Now let's kind of take a step back because I just copy pasted code in and I have no idea what it's doing. So we imported an IO IO utils, which gives us act uh, gives us access to IO utils as a method, which I guess we have like other things we can do on this. Write file, read directory, read file, tempter, discard. Okay, don't know what half of those things do, but you can read in a file. <clears throat> I believe this is a shorthand for assigning a variable in declaring a variable and assigning it without having to do like a var. Is that the keyword in? Is it var or def? Uh, how to declare a variable in Go. See, this is one thing I really think a chat GPT and um, GitHub Copilot can help you with just learning new things. You can declare a variable by using the var keyword. Oh, I probably have to type it. And there's no semicolons. Is there a string thing? Test is declared, but is never used. But I'm using it right here. OK, some primitives, int string bool. I don't really use colon e equals in functions. The issue I have a chat GPT is it's so freaking slow to type. Like, just give me the stuff. <laughs> I had to wait so long to get this stuff. See, like this one will declare. So like behind the scenes, I guess it's saying var. But like, how do you assign it without using this? How do I assign a variable in Go without using colon equals? Yeah, that's what I have. Why is it complaining? Test. Oh, it's because I'm not actually using it? Duh. If I just read the thing. What does that do? OK, that makes sense. So this. A little verbose. This is a shorthand. I guess it already like will look at the type and then I'll probably give this a string type. So it's kind of similar to like TypeScript, I guess. That makes sense. Learning something new. Um, let me go back to chat. Check out Gamers Nexus video about gaming chairs. Try to remember that. I don't want to drop 1500 for a chair. Someone says they love me. Thank you. But I'm, I'm married. I have a wife, so don't, don't love me too hard, OK? I library. Why are there always new frameworks to learn? I'm a CS student. I learned React, and apparently now I have to learn Solid. You don't have to learn these things, right? I'll tell you right now, like at my job, I'm using React, but I'm using the single page application of React. Right, I'm not using Next. I'm not using Remix. I'm not using, um, what's the other one that people hyped up? I don't remember. Astro, I'm not using Astro. I'm just using a single page application of React. It's been that way for like five years. So you don't have to learn these new things. Um, in fact, if you're just learning, I would just pick the bare minimum and just stick with that. Like ignore solid, ignore Svelte, ignore view. Well, view is nice. If you want to pick view or react, view is actually kind of easier to get going, but react might have more of a job opportunity market. But there's new stuff because we're always trying to improve, right? 
we're not just making stuff to make stuff like we there's problems in this computer science space that we want to solve and make stuff easier to do and something like next allows us to make really optimized fast to load web pages um but if you don't even understand the needs for those then like don't worry about learning them yet just use react as a single page application get good at the react router understand how to pass data around how to use shared state stuff like that why not use Rust? Because I picked Go. I don't know. There's no reason. Rust is a little bit too low level for me too. Like I kind of avoid C and C++ because I don't care about like all that low level stuff. Um, I rather have a higher level language that can just like take care of a lot of stuff for me. Um, let's write FizzBuzz first. Yeah, we could do that. What about Rust? I'm not. I don't know. I just picked Go because it seems like it's a better better choice for me. Um, I want to make a website for myself with unique style, color, layout, but I'm not so creative. What should I do? I don't have money to hire a graphic designer. You should probably use a pre-made component library like Maintime, JS, or whatever it's called. Like use something that has a built component library, and then I would go and find a website that you like and just emulate exactly like the same styles. You can change the colors, change the padding a little bit, but most of these websites follow basically the same patterns, and I would just pick a good one that you like and try to follow some of those patterns. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Find inspiration from others and try it. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you want the linter to ignore imports, you can use a wildcard character in front of the import and it won't remove it. That's super hacky. It just seems super hacky, but thank you for sharing that knowledge. I'm not bashing you. I'm, sh I'm bashing the fact that we would have to do that. Uh, you can only use, yep, yep, yep. Okay, we, you are not using it. You are just assigning it a value. You can declare a variable like this in this one for the types. Have you ever tried a Vim extension? I, uh, yeah, I don't like Vim. I'll be honest. I think I'm more productive using a trackpad and a keyboard. Um, now reason for that, like, what does Vim give me? Well, I could type in slash and type in like string. I can also just do that. Like, what is the benefit of, of Vim giving me? Maybe there's some things that like could really help me be, you know, better. I can refactor this to be like whatever. Instead of having to type like some weird command in Vim. <laughs> Should I learn TypeScript if I've been learning React for three months already? Um, I guess it's not more about React. What's your proficiency with JavaScript? If you feel like you're pretty okay with JavaScript, then yeah, you could start learning TypeScript. It's even fine to start with TypeScript, honestly. I think it'll help you out um, as a beginner because it'll hold your hand a lot more. What about Rust? I'm not using Rust. I'm using Go. Uh, let's see. I'm a back-end developer. I use Node.js. Should I learn Python or just switch to AI because of... I'm not even sure what that question means. How do you switch to AI? You're asking, should I use No or Python or switch to AI? That doesn't even make sense. Um, to me at least, I don't know, maybe it makes sense to others. What is the best way and where to store refresh access token when doing auth and Next.js from a security standpoint? I thought you wanted to put them in HTTP only secure cookies. Like your, your refresh token, your access token usually you can put in memory in your app inside some type of variable or something that hopefully can't be accessed very easily. And you keep that access token like expiring within 5, 10, 15 minutes. The refresh token though you want to keep on the cookie. Uh, my theme is in the description of my previous videos. Donnie says he's been down this rabbit hole, hole of Go. Donnie, did you like using Go? I'm just doing this for fun, honestly. I just needed some, I just wanted to stream about something. Um, yeah. Dang, we got 137 people watching. Welcome, welcome. Are you using chat GPT to assist with coding or learning? I actually am. If I have something I'm confused about, I'll ask it and it tells me. So... I definitely recommend using AI to like help you learn things. I think it's a great tool. I mean, you can obviously go and search through thousands of different blog posts that explain what you want, but the short condensed version of AI is pretty good. Um, yeah, that's another reason I don't want to do Rust. It seems very low level. So like to do something simple, I have to type more code. I have to understand like pointers and stuff like that, references potentially. I think it takes care of memory management for you, so maybe I don't have to worry about that. I don't really know too much about it, but I like high higher level languages. Like I love Python, I love JavaScript, where 
I can just write a lot less code and achieve a lot more. Why Go? Because I just flipped the coin and I picked Go. Like, literally, that's why I'm doing Go right now. Um, I like Chat GPT. It's pretty cool. I also like Copilot. You can do the same thing with Copilot. Like, if I said, write me a function. I don't have Copilot installed. I probably should use it. Write me a function that reads from a file called test.json. Right? Copilot, if you guys haven't seen it, would literally, literally give me this exact function probably and put it right here. I just hit enter, I get the function, I can do the same thing. Copilot is actually more efficient than chat GPT in my opinion because the code is right in your editor, it's built in. And I think someone said that GitHub Copilot uses um, GPT or something behind the scenes or whatever the same machine learning AI is, it uses the same one behind the scenes. I could be wrong about that though. I want to learn Rust only for Tori. Haven't used that before. How many programming languages do you know? Not, I don't know. I'm not really good at many, honestly. I'm not even that great at TypeScript or JavaScript, and I use that. Well, I mean, JavaScript I'm pretty good at. But I have used Java in the past. I've used PHP in the past. I've used C Sharp a little bit. Um, but professionally, I've only used Java, JavaScript, and a little bit of TypeScript professionally. But I played around with some other languages just for fun. What skills should every developer have? Um, probably communication skills, soft skills, um, problem solving skills, the ability to write and you know collaborate with others. Teamwork is good. Um, I don't know. There's a ton of stuff I could probably list off. By the way, your English speaking skills is pretty easy to understand. Thank you. Appreciate that. Similarly. I'm using ChatGPT to learn Haskell and functional programming. Haskell. I think I've learned Haskell in college. Or was it Lisp? I think it was Lisp. I have used this at work a couple times, but honestly, like, it doesn't give you good answers. Like, I've used it at work to try to do things. Sometimes it gives you a good answer. Sometimes it gives you, like, a generic response that's not useful at all. And so if it's going to give me a generic response that's not useful, then I'm going to use it less. But for learning something new and something that's more entry level, I think it's pretty good. Um, and I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I'm not using Next right now. Okay, there's too many too many messages. I want to learn some Go. I'll get back to your messages in a bit. Okay, so one thing I don't understand about Go is how do I parse this JSON file? Okay, I want to go through. I want to convert this to an object somehow. I have data, which is a string. I'm assuming. But hover over this. What does it say? Oh, it's a byte array. So I may have to convert the byte array to a string. I don't know how to do that. Um, how do I convert a byte array JSON data in Go into a, an object I can use? JSON on Marshall. Now, I, my question is, do I have to import some type of JSON package? I'm assuming I do. Encoding slash JSON. Um, I have to make a struct. So it's kind of like a TypeScript type. And then I have to unmarshal it. Declare a variable of type. Interesting. Let's try that. So I read it into data. And now I should be able to unmarshal it into my user so if i say var is that what they did var user user and then i'm going to create a struct was it define it's type user struct type user struct and then this has a name which is a string nope name string like this i'm not sure what this is though that's kind of weird is that like a description Not sure why you need that. That's kind of weird. A string is this okay? Unmarshall error. Um. Okay. If there is no error, then I'm gonna print out. Oh, if there's an error, print it out and then return. That makes sense. 
So I should probably print out that. Print out the user. String field has a JSON tag, but it's not exported. I don't know what that means. Probably need to import this thing though. What's up, Sky? Okay, it automatically imported JSON or encoding slash JSON, which is pretty cool. Um, struct field name has a JSON tag, but it's not exported. I'm gonna delete that, see what happens. I'm gonna run my code. Name printed out nothing. Okay, so first of all, it's not formatting my code. I don't know why this looks so messed up. Like my Go formatter just stopped working. You didn't use the struct. Type user user. I'm defining a user variable that's a user type. Uppercase name to export it. What does that even mean? I guess I need to I need to put this tag then. Hmm. I don't want it to be uppercase though, right? Do I have to do uppercase? Okay, that's kind of weird. <clears throat> No, I mean, it works fine. I think, th first of all, I don't know why it's, why is it not indenting stuff? Is that, is that normal for the formatter to like not indent your code? Fail to find some Go analysis tools. Sure, just install whatever. All right, so you guys are saying export a field. I don't know what that even means. So let's see. It's important to note that the fields in the user struct must have tags that match the keys in the JSON data. In this example, the name field has a tag name and the age field has the tag age. This seems like a super hacky thing to me. That's just my opinion. This seems like really weird. Also, what happens if I were to add more data to this um, other one, two, three, and then I go ahead and like run this, do I get back one, two, three, or is it just never there? I guess I called it other string. Okay, so you have to like, no matter, I guess if you wanted it, you have to put it there. Okay, obviously. I'm using the MXL 990. It's like 90, it's like, I think I bought it on Amazon for like 50 bucks or something. $59. Um, I think the, the key ingredient to having a good recording though is make sure that your room is very sound treated. So like put sound panels somewhere, hang up mattresses, hang up uh, comforters, reduce the echo and reverberation in your room. And then whatever mic you have, it'll just sound a lot better. Um, my my room, my recording right now has a little bit of echo still, but I think it's like, I'll address it when I address it. Okay, so uh, let me Google that because I don't know what it means to export. And what does it mean to export? Mean to export a name in a struct using Go. Like is export, is that is that the same thing as public? Your struct has a field with lowercase that is treated like a private. Okay, so if it's exported, that means it's public, right? Yo, I don't need to use Go mod in it. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Does it just automatically create that stuff when you run your file? Um, yeah, I don't really know.
It's, it's his website says he has health issues. It says near of his end of life, so I don't know. It would stink if he actually has health issues. I thought he was doing good, but all of a sudden he just like deleted everything. For an intermediate dev that doesn't do much database stuff, is it worth learning the MySQL library or using ORM? Uh, I mean, you could just use Prisma. That's fine. It's good to learn like how to write SQL queries, though. Honestly, like spend some time learning how to write SQL queries. But then once you understand it, like I would definitely learn an ORM, like Prisma, SQLize. I think there's like type ORM. I personally would use Prisma because it's nice. What do you think about Spring Boot? I don't know. The word Spring, though, gives me some flashbacks to my first job where you had tons of configuration. You had all these XML files. Nothing was straightforward to read your code base. You had like beans and everywhere. It's just, it was a mess. A complete mess in my opinion but i don't know if i use spring boot or if i'm using some other type of spring this seems like a lot of over engineering uh i only use chat gpt once at work to generate a list of keywords about a topic the field of, yeah, yeah it's, it works pretty good mm. Yeah, this, I, I like using high, uh, what's called large diaphragm condenser microphones. I think it's just, wait, is it condenser? Large diaphragm condenser, yeah. Um, a lot of people use the Sure, they use this one. Like, you'll see most people who are like Twitch streamers and YouTubers, they use this mic. This mic just sounds like there's like a sheet over their mouth when they're talking. It just sounds very muddied. The very podcasty, like, I don't know, type of mic. I like the crisp sounds of um, large diaphragm condensers, but the issue with those is that you have to have a pretty good sound treated room. Like, even if you have like an AC unit above your head that's blowing air, this thing is going to pick it up. So, you got to make sure that your room is like really sound treated. Um, I don't really know. I don't really deal with resumes, honestly. If you don't have like real work experience, it's very hard to catch people's attention on a resume. Because that's probably the first thing people look at. Do you plan to use Go to build your backend in the future? I'll probably be sticking to Node, honestly. Unless I'm like really blown away with Go. But so far, this is this hack is kind of... I don't like this hack. I don't like how I have to make this a capital N just to make it public. That seems like a hack to me. But hey, there's stuff I don't know about it. So let me not judge it too harshly. How much do you earn a month? I'm not going to answer that. I've been watching your vids. They're kind of easy to follow the way you put it, but are you using chat GPT as a learning tool for now? Yeah, I'm just using it to learn. Um, just ask it questions. Uh, I just write C sharp and JavaScript at work. I like to start using TypeScript, but I found it harder to learn than C sharp. I've always known myself not knowing the type of return or something. Uh, I don't know what you said here, Florian. Is it just me? Which? Hello, how's it going, everyone? Um, okay, let's see what else we can do. So let's say test JSON is actually an array now. How do we loop over that? So we're unmarshalling this. I'm assuming we could probably just put brackets here. Uh, can't. Let's try to figure that out. How do we... How to make... How do I declare a variable that is an array of user trucks?
why would you put the array in front? Like, why? <laughs> it, literally, every single language I've used puts the array at the end. And they decide they're going to put the array at the front because they want to be different. Like, why? Like, I'm pretty sure in Java, to declare an array, you put this stuff at the end too, right? Anyway, that pars it. That's cool. Um, let's see if we can actually... Uh, I'm going to name this, instead of test, I'm going to say items. And then name, and this will be price. And this will be in cents. How many cents this thing costs? So I'm going to add a couple of them. I'll say like eggs, bread, do it again. What else? Milk. Yes, these are American prices. Milk is like $6.99, $5.99. Well, I guess I get almond milk, so it's probably more expensive because it's not dairy. Actually, is it $6.99? Yeah, American stuff is expensive. I go shopping and then like I'm just buying a handful of things. I leave the store having to pay like 75 bucks or 100 bucks for like a handful of things. Crazy. Um, okay, so what am I trying to do? I, I refactored this to be items.json, which has an array of name and cost. Oh, it's called price. Yeah, and, and they're going to tax me on the stuff I buy. IO tool utils have been deprecated since Go 16. The same function as not providing the package IO or package OS. Okay, so here's another issue with chat GPT. It literally gave me old code. Okay, it gave me some bad code. So now I have to go figure out what do I need to use instead? Uh, package OS. Go how to read a file, package OS. OS open file for read access. Mm. Let's go read here real quick. Do I want to use package OS? They say I can use IO. This one's old, they said. Um, import IO. Read the whole content, content of the file and parse it. Okay, let's just try doing this, I guess. OS open. Let's just try changing this up a little bit. So instead of doing that, uh, what does input file need to be? Is that a, yeah, it's probably a string. So I'm going to paste this string here. OS should auto import data. Let's print out data. I'm going to open the file. That's cool. Maybe we should return here if that fails. Um, Lenter cannot seem to fix my code. And let's see what this returns. So this returns a pointer to a file. This thing needs a string or a byte array. So how do we get, what does read do? Read is going to read the file and it probably needs a reference to a byte array. So I would have to do like var Let me change this to file. This will be data. This will be a byte array. And then I'll pass it data. And then I should be able to marshal it. Let's see what happens here. Of course, that doesn't work. Um, probably need to give it a pointer then. Does this need a pointer? Reads up to length bytes from the array and stores them in. I guess I could just go read down this. 
So they have a max size. Their chunk size, string convert, A to I. What is all this garbage? You know, there's a lot of ways to read a file, huh? You can use file scanner. Let me just stick with the first approach since I feel like I'm almost there. But it seems kind of bad. I'm not sure why they deprecated this. This was obviously super easy to use. Um, but I guess that's cool. Read file in chunks and go link. Go reading a file in chunks is the most efficient approach. Thus, it doesn't take the whole file contents completely into memory, but is loaded in a specific chunk. So the issue is I was trying to read a JSON file and it probably read in like half of it. And I tried to parse it. So what is max size? I have to go and read in this byte and then I had probably like concatenate it together. Read content to buffer. File read, read total. If there's an error, print the error. File content is the string. Print the content from the buffer. Um, okay. I guess we should close it. I'm not sure where you close it from. You open it, defer file close. Don't know what that does. I guess it just decides to close it when we're not using it or something. Max size. That's something that you just declare. This doing. Let's just do a, a 20. So basically you make a file pointer, you're gonna slowly loop over the contents of the file, probably put them in this byte array, and then you loop over this until you're done. Can't use the unmarshal yet, so I'm gonna have to do this. File.read data. Read total, if there's an error, if error is IO. Cleared IO, print the error, file content. I'm gonna go up here and say um, var JSON string is a string. Do they have a plus equals in this language? Is that how you concatenate stuff together? Format, print, line, JSON string. So what this should do, it should at least when I run this code, it should print out. Gotta fix this linter though. Um, user declared but not used. Really, it crashes because of that? It, like it won't even run your code because you're declaring something that's not used? That's that's not cool in my opinion, but hey. They're forcing me to write better code. I don't like it. Okay, so that prints out the whole contents of the file. Slowly reads it in chunk by chunk, which is good. I mean, they explain how this is more efficient, more beneficial, um, because it doesn't probably eat up something. I don't know, your CPU usage or whatever. May lead to memory leakage. Okay, so that's why they want you to read it in chunk by chunk, but then you end up just appending it all to a file yourself and because you can't really unmarshal it unless you actually have proper JSON, I don't think. So anyway, let's just try this. Add back user. And we should be able to take in that string JSON here. But this needs to be a byte array. There's a link on the right, read JSON data. That's the left. But thank you. The 
Declare an empty map interface. Jason on Marshall, Byte Array, Company, Data Result. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I need to either A, convert the string to an array. And okay, can I concatenate? So if if this was actually an array of bytes, is is it smart enough to like expand this array, or do I have to like do something else? I want string. Yeah, obviously I probably have to like declare this with something. Um. I'm just playing around with code right now. I mean, you guys, if you're watching this stream and you know Go, then you probably know the answers already, but I have never used Go before, so half the stuff, I don't know what's going on. How do I con... How do I append a byte array to an existing byte array in Go? I might have to make, like, two... A new array with the size of both of the old arrays added together... And now it's, it's stuck. How do I convert a string to a byte in Go? Oh, that's an add. Go back. That one might be an add too. Oh, you just... Okay. Let me go back. Obviously what I'm doing is probably not efficient. But this looks like it'll take the string, convert it to a byte array, and I could probably print it out. Not on Marshall number. Oh, it's probably because that needs to be a number. Is number a type? No. Integer? Is that a type? Int? There we go. And that's cool. If you want to backseat, I have no idea what I'm doing. So feel free to backseat all you want. Oh, by the way, Bash Bunny also has a, a YouTube channel. Go check her out. Go give her a subscribe. I think she also streams on Twitch, so go follow her Twitch as well. And thanks for joining. Um, let me go back to the chat, though, because let's see if there's a... You might like Wales. It lets you write desktop applications with web dev front end and go back end. I'll check that out in a little bit. Array equals append array new value. So I'm going to take the same code, but I want to rewrite it to try to like not have to append a bunch of stuff to a string. Like I'd rather this be a byte and then like I could just keep appending to it. Um, JSON bytes. Can you override existing stuff? Be total. I have no idea what any of this stuff is doing. So data, data is a byte array. I'm guessing you can tell it to get the first X amount of elements by doing this. I think I've seen something similar in Python that does this. But you're saying get And slice types. Wait, let's go back to a chat EPT and see if it gave me an answer. One second. Let me check how long I've been streaming for. Oh, an hour. I uh, don't know what I'm doing. All right, so this says you can declare two bytes and then you can append them together. That's what I'm doing here, though, right? Data. 
is a byte array of 20 length. JSON bytes is a byte array. I probably actually need to do this. Just overwrite it or reassign it instead of trying to declare it because I've already declared it. Append JSON bytes with data. Cannot use data retotal value of type byte as byte value in argument to append. What does that mean, man? Not use your data read total value of type. Let's try this. Um, you're missing a GoLang spread operator. Oh, is, oh, like dot 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 at the end. Okay. It's like they took things from other languages and they changed it to be very different. Whereas JavaScript, you put it in the front, and now Golang, they put it in the back. And for what reason? I want to know. Okay, so that works as well. So we learned how to basically append arrays together. Change JSON bytes to array array of bytes. Read total is probably a byte. Yeah, read total is an int. So like when you do file read, it I guess it'll just read X amount of characters from a file, put it into a byte array, but then it'll tell you like, hey, I only read 10 characters from this file and put it in that array. So now you have to like take the first 10 characters. I don't know what the dot 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 is. They said it's a spread operator. I'm not sure why you have to spread though. That's kind of strange. Other slice. Is this really the best way you can you can read a JSON file and go? Like this seems like so much code just to do something simple. By the way, anyone watching this, like anytime I learn something new, I just bash it. It's probably not bad. Like Go is probably a great language, but there's stuff that they're going to be doing in this language that I'm just not familiar with. So you're probably going to hear me just bashing some of the stuff they do. So that's just uh, me getting over the edges of a new language. Go <clears throat> how to read in a um, JSON file. Let's see what the best example. Let's find the best dev.2 post. Coral Edge, uh, probably an ad. Let's see what Ramu has to say. Okay, you make a struct. That's what I'm doing. OS read file. Okay, that seems a lot more condensed. Is terse the word? Is that a good dictionary word? I don't know. Let's just cut a, let's grab this one. This I kind of like this a little bit better. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this whole thing over. I'm going to say, hello. Uh, I'll just call it like do stuff. Is there a convention with Go? Like, do you supposed to use hyphens between files? Like, if you name your files, is it supposed to look like that? Don't really know. Main redeclared in this. What does that mean? I'm gonna grab this this user thing. I'm gonna call this an item. Is it because you can't have two main? I have a main declared here. Yeah, I'm just trying to read a JSON file, honestly. This is the first time I've ever used Go, so I'm just trying to read a JSON file. And this guy says you could do it this way. But I'm also just playing around, like what are the different ways you can read in and like pin bytes together and do stuff? What's the most efficient way? I don't know. If I just comment this whole thing out, does that fix it? Okay, so you can only have one main. Okay. Usually an underscore. Okay, let's try that. You know what I'm confused about? How do I, if I have like different files, let's say I have a file called item reader. 
and this has a function in here. Let me just, I'm killing all this code. Package main, item read, read, read items. It has a function called read items, and it's supposed to return. What does it need to return? Oh, let me rename this to you. Okay, let me name this items. This will be item, item. No, I do like the language. Like it seems like it's very easy to read and there's not curly braces. Well, there are curly braces. There are not a lot of semicolons. Like a mix of JavaScript and Python and well, this thing, this is like a, I guess a pointer. This is very C-like. Items is declared, but never used. So I read in a file, read items file. I mean, I could pass in the file name here, but how do we, let's go ahead and pass that pointer. Is that what this is? Is this a pointer? This little ambersand? Anyway, let's just return items. Too many return values. Uh, okay. I guess it's because this thing can return like potentially nothing. Like, do I just want to return an empty array here? I haven't looked at chat in a while. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm deep in the weeds of like trying to understand what is going on. Can I throw an error? I wish I had Copilot right now. Function signature needs a return type. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's saving it to the original item. How do you do a return type in functions? Is it here? No. Is it here? How do I declare a return type in Go function? Yeah, I try to ignore chat sometimes. It's just, especially if I'm trying to learn something. Oh, obviously. Okay, so the way we declare types on variables is we put it after. So why wouldn't we do the same thing here? So that's what we do. But I thought it could like infer the type. I think it's because this thing um, could potentially not read the file correctly. So you could throw an error, which I don't know how to do that. This thing is still typing how to throw an error in Golang. I'd rather just crash. I don't know if that's proper though. I'm guessing the proper thing on Go is like you return errors and then you consume them somewhere higher up. Return message hyphen nil. Bring or error. So if I try to read items, either going to give me the items or it's going to give me error. Is that proper? Errors new, empty new, return. No items, file found. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. 
I don't know what I'm doing. So how do I, do I just return it like that? Unexpected. You use log fatal. Does that actually like throw an error though? So, okay, hold on. So this thing, I made a function that can either return an array of items and it could have an error defined, right? And then how do I return that? Like if I just wanted to return nothing, I guess I could say nil. Is that, is that proper? What's up, Dennis? How you doing? Oh, they just do this. By the way, Dennis is a, uh, let me go ahead and share. Dennis Ivy, if you don't know him, he's another YouTuber. Go ahead, check him out. Dennis Ivy at YouTube. He does a lot of Python stuff. Have you been publishing uh, stuff in a while, Dennis? And how are your holidays? Let me do this. Okay, that's working. Dennis, my man with a 20 buck super chat. You know, Dennis is awesome. He helped me land like a contract um, with another company to make content and get paid for it. And now he's sending me super chats. Like Dennis is my sugar daddy right now. Okay. I want everyone to recognize that. Go to his channel, check him out, subscribe, YouTube, Dennis Ivy. 180 subscribers. So I'm going to go ahead and paste his link in the chat. Go ahead and uh, paste Bash Bunny's YouTube in the chat as well, since she's here hanging out. Um, I've been MIA working on some projects that take too much attention. Yeah, no worries. Sometimes it, like work projects or just in general, some side projects and stuff. No, I appreciate the help. I think it's helping me uh, with everyone just giving me stuff. I I just need to try different stuff like log fatal. I got to try. I don't know why you use log fatal over a format like this. Let's see. Log. So this one will actually throw an error probably. Oh yeah, it'll exit with a one. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. So if I wanted to, I could have this thing just fail my entire program, which might be desirable. Item is redeclared. Let's do nil and we'll do the same thing over here. Um, invalid JSON file. Item is redeclared in this block. Where? Oh. That's kind of weird about Go is like, I guess because I share the same package, all the functions I declare here will overwrite all the functions I declare here. All right, later, Dennis. Thanks for the super chat. Again, I definitely appreciate that and uh, hope, to, hope to see you publishing more content when you get some more time. I always like watching your stuff. Yeah, Dennis is really good at Django. Sometimes I watch his stuff and I'm like trying to follow along. He just, I can't, it's just, he just knows so much about Django and like trying to like learn how to even do something simple in Python. Errors isn't part of the standard library, so often you'll want to wrap the errors so you can include your custom error message plus the original error. Errors isn't part of the standard library. Where am I using errors again? Let me delete some of this stuff so I don't have errors everywhere. Okay, so it, hold on. I'll get back to that in just two seconds. Let me finish my thought of, I was trying to like figure out how to share fi functions between stuff, but I think if I say like items, wait, what is it? What do we call it? Read items. Um, this should give back Something format print. I don't remember what it was. I deleted it, so now I'm 
I'm printed out. Actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just keep this. So when I run this code, it should give back items or error. If there's an error, if it's not equal to nil, I guess you could say log dot fatal uh something whoops, hold on. Something went wrong. Can't use single quotes. This should crash if it gets to this point, right? Items. So I all I wanted to do was I wanted to read in this JSON file, loop over all the prices and add them together just for something fun. Um, I don't even know how to do a for loop. Uh, format error F. If the functions are public, first letter is uppercase, then you can just access it by name. You have to do package my function if they're in different packages. Addy, hold on, I'm almost done. My kid's trying to get into my room. Give me a second. Um, okay, uh, you know, this will help me stay focused. I'm gonna go ahead and just do like a to-do MD. I'm trying to run a function from another file. And then I'm getting a suggestion about FMT error F. What does that do? FMT error F. This formats according to the format specifier returns a string as a value of specifies error. Format specifies w, w verb with an error operand. The return error will implement an unwrap method returning the operand. It is invalid to include more than one. Oh, you're saying here, um, invalid JSON file, int b. Marshall like that. I could wrap it so we can still get information about like what actually happened to lower level if we wanted to have that be passed in, but then we could just go ahead and like put a custom message in front of it so we don't lose the original error issue. And then here, if there's an error, I'm guessing there's a fatal F. I'm guessing again, you could do a percent W or V, print that out. Um, <laughs> nah, it's good information, it's a lot of new stuff. Um, hopefully I retain at least half of the stuff I'm doing in the stream today, but. Uh, okay, so I wanted to loop over, I don't know how to do a loop. Like I'm reading files I haven't even learned. How, how to loop over an array and go. Probably going to be something similar to JavaScript. For loop. Clear array of integers, numbers. Okay, okay. Type faster, type faster. Is that really? Do I have to use a traditional for loop like that? <laughs> like, is there like a for of loop in Go? Does Go have a for of? I think it's actually about to type it up for me. Hold on. Let me delete some of this stuff. Oh, I delete that Wallace thing. I should probably go back. Oh, range. Yeah, that seems like a more concise way to do it. Uh, let's just try this out. So I wanted to loop over the items. Range probably tells you the length of it. V for I. What is I? I haven't ran this in a while, so let's run this, see what happens. So i is the index, obviously. v is the value. And v I should be able to, okay, there, I got the type. Yeah, so all I wanted to do is just sum it up. So like, 
sum equals zero, sum plus equals v dot price, format print line. Well, I guess I need to do a print f, f print f, um, and then percent. Is this similar to like d, where you have to do d for numbers, or does it not matter? Let's hover over this. I is the clear, but it's never used. Okay. This fourteen ninety seven percent D percent D slash new line. Why is it printing like a? Is it just like the end of end of line character? Oh, okay. Fourteen ninety seven. Is that right? Four ninety nine, two ninety nine, fourteen ninety seven. Yeah, cool. Um, so we successfully, or I've successfully, I should say we, because y'all helped me out as well. We loaded in a file, looped over ele every element one by one. We converted, we like unmarshaled the objects or whatever into structs that have name and price. I put that all in a utility function that I'm reading from another file. That gives me back either items or errors. If there's an error, let's just see if there's an error. Like I'm gonna go ahead and just put a bad character here. Something went wrong, invalid JSON file, invalid character A. So where am I printing? Something went wrong. Yeah, so it gets here and then it prints out the original error. So that's cool. It also adds like a timestamp. Interesting. Um, if the functions are public, then you can just access it by name. You might have to do a package my function if they're in different packages. In VS Code, okay. And I appreciate all the, the help you're giving. I, it's helped me learn this a lot faster. I mean, I have like chat GPT and also just Googling stuff, but just having live people tell me like better ways to do stuff is super beneficial. But I, I guess I want to investigate. I have a little bit of time. I might wrap this up soon, but I have a little bit of time to, uh, this is a different package. How does that work? I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do packages. Um, maybe that's not how you do it. Like, would everything inside this directory basically be the same package? Is there a way to declare, declare multiple packages? And go older. Learn go with tests. Let me go ahead and put that. Package A. So if this is package A. Wait, I don't know if I'm even on a correct Stack Overflow. You cannot have two packages per directory, hence the error. The so solution is to move your package to a new directory. Okay, this is kind of like Python, isn't it? So if I said like readers. Oh wait, I'll call this. Let me rename this the main. And then item items reader. I'll just call it readers unused. So how do I import? Um, do I do that? No. How 
How do I import a package though? Package my package, package test. Import. Oh, the, the okay, hold on. Import reader slash. So confused right now. Readers, readers? Nope. You know, it seems like they do actual um like cap capital case or something. Might do that. You need to export the function using capitals. Okay. Oh crap. So if I make this a capital R, it's exported from this package. But then how do I import it? from this package. This is my package A and this is my package B. Oh wait, maybe there's a quick fix. Oh. Import B. I should probably read an actual tutorial or watch a YouTube video, but I like just struggling. <laughs> How to understand packages with Go. This is the last thing I'm going to try to do. Package main, function name, importing packages, math, math around, math pi. Exporting packages, exporting and unexported unexp names. Yeah, it's boring watching through like someone talk about languages. I'd rather just sit here for three hours struggling doing a for loop than to watch a 20 minute video that tells me how to do a for loop. Is that how you do it? Could not import B, no required module provides pack B. Well, I think I call it readers B. This is so hard. I just want to import a package from another folder. Man, I feel bad for beginners who are trying to learn this stuff for the first time. Like I've been coding for a long time and like this is struggling for me. It's it's a super simple thing. You just have to figure out like how to do it, right? Package greet. Okay, so they named the package to meet the to match the folder name. Don't know if I need to do that. Um that deletes it. Where do I do import parentheses? Like this? Entry export. Which greet lowercase will not be exported. Entry import greet. So they're just importing. Import readers. Import name of your root package. You name root pack with go mod init. Like this? <laughs> okay, so in their example, they have entry.go which is like my main, they import greet. Oh, I guess it's complaining about not being able to find that.
Do I have to name the Go file the same as the folder? App treat day. I like it. Um. Sample playground readers. Why doesn't this auto import though? You know what I'm saying? Like, why can this not auto import my stuff? Example play go playground readers. No, that just deletes it. Import readers. Okay, I do that. Readers dot, I do that. It's complaining here that I can't. Could not import readers. No required module provides package readers. Import readers. When you're declaring it in main go, it has to be readers read file. That's what I'm doing, read items. You have to run go mod tidy, go mod tidy. Oh, oh, there we go. What happened? I, th I swear I had that, though. Anyway, I guess this works. It's not a main package. Okay. Uh, package example Go Playground is not a main package. Function main is unused. Why? I thought I thought main is like the first thing that gets ran, right? Do I need to rename this to something else? Yeah, I probably had a typo, didn't I? Let me rename this to entry. I don't really know. Isn't coding fun? There we go. So if I add another thing here, test go, and I say like fun GG, I guess it's not called fun, it's called funk. And I say package readers readers and I say fmt print okay can does that mean I should be able to say readers dot pg okay so basically everything in this folder this directory depending on I guess what you put at the top of the file would be grouped together but you can't have two packages. Like, can you have different packages in this folder? Like, if I call this test. No. I don't understand what the point of having the package at the top. If the directory structure dictates what your package has to be called, why would you... Like, why? What happens if I make a new directory called test? And I call this package of like reader slash test. No. Ah. Anyway, I'm just playing around with stuff, wasting my time. I need to actually watch a real tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. But I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I mean, I got, I learned some new things. So far, I'm not too too impressed with. Let me not say anything yet. I mean, it's cool. There's just stuff I don't know about. Um, some strange things that I'm just not used to. So I don't want to judge the language too harshly. Because I'm sure when I first learned learned it, when I was first learning Node, I'm sure there's stuff that I'm like, oh, this is this is weird. This is awful. But 
Let me read through the comments one last time to see if people can enlighten me on better ways of what I did. Yeah, I probably had a typo when I was doing it. Package A must be package main. Okay, there we go. Rename package to A to main. Root pack name. You need to let, let Go compiler know what is part of the main package and what is not. Any .go files that start with a package main statement are part of the same package. Big fan of you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think only readers. Package is like namespace. If you want to import it as a lib package, you need to run go mod man let it resolve it for you like go oh, okay oh, what's up bro i finally got the job as a software developer for telecommunications company good job congratulations um i'm glad that hopefully my videos helped you land that job i'm i'm glad to hear that how's your new job been going i need to really understand these packages i don't think i understand them like what is the point of some of this stuff. Yeah, I need I need to actually go and read like I need to actually go through all of this stuff. Like they actually tell you how to do like modules, I like, guarantee you. A Toro go go here. Um there's only five pages of it though. Click a tour to find out. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'll I'll read this a little bit more and see if uh I'll, I'll keep playing around with it, see if I like it or not. But thank you for everyone who has helped me out with things I was stuck on. There's obviously a lot of stuff I need to learn, and I only spent an hour forty three minutes trying to play with it, so I only scratched the surface of the syntax and the language and whatnot. But if you enjoyed watching, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to talk about coding and maybe get some feedback and some answers. Um, but yeah. Let me see if there's any, any other questions. Sorry. Uh, enjoy it. I'm on the fence so far about if I like Go or not. I'm on the fence, but it's going to take me longer to figure it out. A soap web service. Yo, soap is so old. Dang. Good luck with that. If they were... if to this day I struggle with importing packages, I used to do Go before Go Mod. Did. Yeah, I have to go and understand more about Go Mod, I guess as well. Anyway, have a good day, y'all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the uh, the help as I tried to struggle learning Go. And uh, stay tuned if I decide to do another live stream in the future. Have a good day.